When we're reviewing solubility rules, uh, in my classroom, my students, whether they're in general chemistry or advanced chemistry, should know at some point during the year that all the salts of alkali metals are soluble. Now they also realize that there's a limit to everything, that you can't dump a cup of salt into a few ounces of water and expect it all to dissolve, but generally the salts of alkali metals are soluble. They know that the salts of ammonium compounds are soluble and the salts of nitrates are soluble. And that's about what I expect my general chemistry students to know. Once they get more advanced though, they have to know more things about solubility and they have to know which precipitates will form. So once we've uh, determined that all alkali metals or salts are soluble, what do we do about the alkaline earth metals? Well, are they soluble or are they not? And of course my students know that the answer to those kinds of questions is usually yes. Wait a minute, that was a yes or no question. Sometimes the salts of alkaline earth metals are soluble and sometimes they're not. And how are we going to be able to predict? What if something comes up and I can't remember that particular compound? So it's best if you can remember all of them and we know we can't, so we're gonna try to make some solubility predictions based in periodic trends. So what I have is I have four solutions of alkaline earth metal chlorides. I have magnesium chloride, I have calcium chloride, I have strontium chloride, and I have barium chloride. Those of you familiar enough with the periodic table have realized I've just named the first four alkaline earth metals in order. So what we're going to do is test those four metals and their solubilities with anions. Obviously they're all soluble in chloride solution. That's a good thing to remember. Alkaline earth metals are soluble with, in their chloride form. But we're going to add them to uh, different anions. And the different anions are things we don't come in contact with very often. We're going to add them to the iodate ion. We're going to combine them with the sulfate ion. We're going to combine them with an oxalate ion. And we're going to combine them with a carbonate ion. All right, so we're going to start by putting um, our magnesium ions, we're going to put a few drops, uh, cover the bottom of the well, in the first row. You know, we're talking about periodic properties, we have to know rows from columns. So we're going across, and I'm just putting in enough to cover the bottom of the well. So now we've got our magnesium ions going across the top row. Then we take our calcium ions, the second member of the alkaline earth metal family. And I'm going to fill these wells, not fill them, I'm going to put enough to cover the bottom. 10, 12, 15 drops, whatever it takes. Alrighty. Now these are all 0.1 molar solutions, um, which seems to be good concentration to use. Okay, we're working on the strontium now. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, we're gonna take barium. And I can ask my students at this point in time, these are all chloride compounds, and what generalization can we make about alkaline earth metal chloride salts? They are all soluble because all of them are certainly dissolving, uh, or are dissolved right now. Okay, what about iodate? What do we know about iodate? Well, my advanced students would know its formula in its charge. They know it's a one minus charge. And the smaller the charge, the less strong the lattice energy. Maybe we got some solubility here. Not really familiar with a lot of iodate compounds. So let's find out. Let's try iodate with the magnesium. I'm not seeing a lot of 
anything happening in there. That's what my students like to say, nothing happened. I say, well, you added something. Something must have happened. Well, apparently, we're not getting any new compounds formed, at least not visibly. Okay. When I get to the barium, however, something happens. And if they write down on their paper, something happened, I'm going to get very upset about that. They need to describe it. And what we've got is a milky white precipitate. So it appears that iodate compounds are fairly soluble, not with barium though. Okay, anion number two is sulfate. So we're going to start at the top of the uh, alkaline earth metal column. We're going to start with our magnesium. And we're going to add our sulfate ions to our magnesium. Well, these are all sodium, uh, sodium salts, by the way, sodium solutions. Magnesium appears to be soluble with sulfate. Calcium appears to be soluble with sulfate. We'll go down to our strontium. Oh, well, strontium and sulfate appear to be very fond of each other because they're making a precipitate. And barium and sulfate is very insoluble in water. And I uh, often talk about the fact that if you go in for medical testing, you're very thankful that barium and sulfate is insoluble because that's what they use for barium enemas. And we certainly don't want that to dissolve and distribute through our bodies because the barium ions are not, are very toxic. So, okay. Now we've got oxalate. And we, aren't, we don't do a whole lot in our class with oxalate ions, but that's one of the ions I have the kids memorize if they are advanced students. So let's find out what happens with oxalate ions. We look at the magnesium again. Add some oxalate. Hmm, looks pretty clear to me. We go to the calcium. Oh, it only took two drops to do that. Let's make them even though we want to. Okay, so the calcium oxalate forms a precipitate. The strontium oxalate forms a precipitate. And the barium oxalate forms a precipitate. And our last ion here is carbonate. We'll try the carbonate with the magnesium. Precipitate. Carbonate with the calcium. Precipitate. Carbonate with the strontium. And carbonate with the barium. Now this is all well and good and you can memorize all of those formulas. But what's nice about this is that because we've chosen the alkaline earth metals in order of their appearance on the periodic table, we have made ourselves a periodic chart. We've made ourselves a pattern. And we can see that number one alkaline earth metal, magnesium, appears to have the best solubility with these ions. Only one precipitate. I'm sorry, we're going across. Uh, only one precipitate. And that was with the carbonate. Then we go to number two alkaline earth metal, the calcium. And the calcium had two that were soluble and two that were precipitates. And number three alkaline earth metal, the strontium, had three precipitates. And the number four alkaline earth metal, the barium, well, we're just going to say the barium makes precipitate with just about everything. So we've got a periodic trend. The higher up on the periodic table the alkaline earth metal is, the, less, the more soluble it is, the fewer precipitates it makes. And that gives my students who can't memorize every precipitate, I can't, I don't, a way to make some predictions. The higher up on the periodic table, table the alkaline earth metal is, the more likely it is to dissolve. Um, over here at the chart, I have a, my cheat sheet where I can, uh, where we have the results of this. Certainly I wouldn't show this to the students ahead of time. I would have them make their own data table. Um, or we could do this as a lab for them. Or I could do this as a demonstration. I wouldn't give them the generalization, the trend. I would make them come up with the trend themselves. Say, what, what can we decide from this? What can we decide about the solubility of alkaline earth metals? I'm also now looking at not just the solubility of the cations, but solubility of the anions. We see that our carbonate seems to precipitate with everything. 
Okay. Our oxalate has three precipitates out of the four. Our sulfate, only two. And our iodate seems to be very soluble, except, of course, with barium. Okay. So we can form our generalizations here, and it becomes easier then for the students to make predictions now that they have these experiences. Doesn't cover every precipitate, but it gives them a generalization to make. 